Well, good morning, and uh, welcome to our special commemoration service to mark the death of Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. This morning, we'll be using a slightly adapted version of our normal communion service, but everything that you need will be on the screen. And so I'd like to invite us to begin with just a moment of quiet as we come to our worship and commemoration. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We meet in the name of Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to the glory of the God the Father. Grace and mercy be with you. We meet this day to remember before God our late Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, to renew our trust and confidence in Christ, and to pray that together we may be one in him, through whom we offer our prayers and praises to the Father. We stand to sing our first hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
As we remain standing, let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him as we sit or kneel to confess our sins. We'll pause for a moment of quiet to bring to mind those things that we need to confess today. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May God our Father forgive us our sins, and bring us to the eternal joy of his kingdom, where dust and ashes have no dominion. Amen. And a special collect written for today. Merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that we are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of our late Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth, for the love she received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time, we may share with your servant Elizabeth that clearer vision promised to us in the same Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. We now have our first reading. first reading is from the book of Revelations, chapter 21, beginning at the first verse. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he wrote, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand now again to sing our second hymn, Lord of all hopefulness. Gospel reading is taken from Luke, chapter 10, starting at verse 25. So hear the gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbour as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came, came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while travelling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. 
Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, please do be seated. Well, it's hard to believe that we should have two so very significant dates in 2022 relating to the life of Queen Elizabeth II. Today we gather together on the eve of her funeral, and it may not necessarily feel like a day full of joy, but it's hard to believe that just over three months ago, and yes, I had to check that, because it seems much longer, doesn't it, that we had that amazing weekend of celebrations to mark her Platinum Jubilee. And those who heard me preach on that occasion might remember that I started my sermon that day with the following words. The crown translates a woman to a queen. Endless gold circling itself, an O like a well. Fathomless for the years to drown in. History's bride anointed, blessed for a crowning. One head alone can know its weight, on throne in pageantry, and feel it still in private space when it's lifted. Not a hollow thing, but a measuring. No halo, treasure, but a valuing, decades and duty. Time gifted, the crown is old light, journeying from skulls of kings to living queen. Its jewels glow, virtues. Loyalty's ruby, blood deep. Sapphire's ice resilience, emerald evergreen, the shy pearl humility. My whole life, whether it be long or short, devoted to your service, not lightly worn. Those words were written by Carol Ann Duffy for the 60th anniversary of the Queen's coronation, and they were fitting for the Platinum Jubilee. But as I reflected back, seem equally fitting for today. If you've ever watched the Queen's speeches on Christmas Day, you may have noticed that since the millennium they took on something of a more explicit Christian tone. In them, Queen Elizabeth spoke openly about her faith in Jesus and the difference that it made to her. In 2014, for example, she said this, For me, the life of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, is an inspiration and an anchor in my life. A role model of reconciliation and forgiveness, he stretched out his hands in love, acceptance and healing. Christ's example has taught me to seek to respect and value all people of whatever faith or none. I have no idea what the Queen was like in private. But what I saw in her any time we observed her in public was someone who genuinely sought to carry out the duties of her role, duties that she firmly believed were God-given in a way that would please God. That poem by Carol Ann Duffy spoke of the jewels of crown as virtues, ruby as loyalty, sapphire as resilience, and pearl as humility. 
And it made me wonder whether it's these virtues that made millions of people flock to London to take part in Jubilee celebrations and have made huge numbers gather over the past few days, waiting for hours to observe and offer their respect and thanksgiving as she lies in state. The two readings that I chose for today seem appropriate. The first, maybe more so than the second until I explain it, but the first is that wonderful reading from Revelation 21 that offers something of a vision of heaven. The reason that it seems so fitting for today is that it offers us a glimpse of the place where the queen is now. Heaven is, put simply, the presence of God And it is with her God that the Queen is now to be found. And in the midst of the sadness surrounding her death, there is great comfort to be found in that image. But why the Good Samaritan? Well, did you know that the Queen took that parable as the basis for at least three of her Christmas addresses? It was a passage that clearly not only resonated with her, but a passage that shaped her service and kindness to others. In 2020, for example, she used the parable in reference to the frontline workers who were working tirelessly for others while we were in the grip of COVID. And in 1989, she used it as a reflection based around our care for the planet and environment. Over the past week or so, I've spoken to quite a lot of people that have gathered at different events to mark the death of Queen Elizabeth. And some of those have even had the honour of meeting her. And time and time again, what I have heard is that when the Queen spoke to somebody, it was as though they were the only person there. That's a gift. She had no way of knowing everybody that she met, or what their needs were, or their joys, or their pressures in life. But for many, in that moment of paradox, someone familiar to us all made someone who was a stranger to them feel like they were important, like they mattered to her. The kindness of strangers, the story of the Good Samaritan. The other thing that's often been said about the Queen is that she offered a sense of constancy and consistency. And they are subtly different things. Consistency is about behaving in the same way over a period of time, but it strikes me that it is possible to be consistent in both good or bad behavior. Constancy is about being faithful and dependable, enduring and unchanging. And to me, that can only be seen in a positive way. I think both were certainly true of Queen Elizabeth. So maybe, and I was just toying with it during the week, we might say that she offered consistency in her constancy. And I think this is why so many people have come to love and admire her with such a strength of feeling. Not actually necessarily because of her role simply, but because of who she was as a person. The Queen's life offers a great example, not only for us who identify with her faith in Jesus, but for all humanity. And although rooted in Jesus' teaching, the message of loving our neighbor, of showing kindness to a stranger, or indeed someone that we know, whether we agree with them or not, is a matter of simple human decency. I started a few moments ago with that, po- that poem from Carol Ann Duffy. And I want to draw to a close by drawing a parallel with the special virtues that we as Christians are called to wear. The fruit of the Spirit rather than gems on a crown. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Will our lives as Christians be celebrated for demonstrating these with consistency of constancy? as we've seen with the Queen. For she was an amazing model of God's grace. 
demonstrating the gift of reconciliation throughout her life. And if there is no greater way to give thanks for who she has been for so many of us, then following her example of demonstrating the love of Jesus in our thoughts, our words, and our deeds would surely be a good and appropriate start. Amen. So I'd like to invite us to stand as we declare our faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now sit for our prayers. As we start our prayers, let us be still in the presence of the Lord and bring our joys and our thanks and concerns to him in a few moments of quiet. Think of the things to be thankful for. Pray for the world's situation and injustices. Pray for the economic situation. And we pray for our Queen. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you've given us in and through the life of your faithful servant, Queen Elizabeth. We give you thanks for her love of family and her gift of friendship, for her devotion to this nation and the nations of the Commonwealth. For her grace, 
dignity and courtesy. And for her generosity and love of life. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing times and the depth of her Christian faith and the witness she bore to it in word and deed. We pray for our sovereign Lord, the King, and all the royal family, that you might reassure them of your continuing love and lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. God of mercy, entrusting into your hands all that you have made, and rejoicing in our communion with all your faithful people, we make our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Will you please stand for the peace? <clears throat> Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the risen Lord be always with you. So from where we are, let us share a sign of peace with one another. Our offertory hymn this morning is one that you will certainly recognize the tune to, but not the words. It's been specially written for this occasion and is, well, if you watched Songs of Praise, I think last Sunday, you might have heard it. It's called We See Tears and Celebration, and it's to the tune of Here is Love, Fast as the Ocean. So let's remain standing as we sing together.
me, all who are called to a place at your table, follow in the way that leads to the unending feast of life. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And now we give you thanks because through him you have given us the hope of a glorious resurrection so that although death comes to us all, yet we rejoice in the promise of eternal life. But to your faithful people, life is changed, not taken away. And when our mortal flesh is laid aside, an everlasting dwelling place is made ready for us in heaven. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son. Yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven where all creation worships you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. We sit or kneel to pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
Father in heaven, whose church on earth is a sign of your heavenly peace, an image of the new and eternal Jerusalem. Grant to us in the days of our pilgrimage that, fed with the living bread of heaven and united in the body of your Son, we may be the temple of your presence, the place of your glory on earth, and a sign of your peace in the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Will you please stand for the prayer of commendation. Into your hands, O Father and Lord, we commend your servant, our late Sovereign Lady Queen Elizabeth. Enlighten her with your holy grace and suffer her never to be separated from you, O Lord in Trinity, God everlasting. And may God in his mercy grant us with all the faithful departed rest and peace. Amen. We remain standing for our God, O oh God, our help in ages past. God, the fountain of all goodness. Bless our sovereign King Charles III and all who are in authority under him, that they may order all things in wisdom and equity, righteousness and peace, to the honour of your name and the good of your church and people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. We remain standing for the national anthem.
Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.